Hey guys, Sean Pruitt here, president of Kingdom Exploration. Today we're going to be discussing what is an oil well log and how do we interpret oil well data. And today I have Kevin Fowler uh, on the line with me today, and he's an, an experienced geologist. Uh, he's the current project geologist for our current program we're offering in New York. And if you want information on that, please give me a call. And uh, he was the senior staff geologist at Hunt Oil in Dallas, Texas, and an advanced senior geologist at Marathon Oil Comp Corporation, both companies, multi-billion dollar companies, and with the highest regard in the industry. And so say hello, Kevin. Hey, Sean. Uh, Kevin Fowler here, and I'm happy to be uh, presenting an uh, introductory log analysis uh, just to show the basics of how you can identify an oil and gas bearing zone. Excellent. So bottom line here, this is a well log that we're looking at. And this, the reason why we need well logs is because if a well is 10,000 feet deep, you are not, you don't have the ability to look at it with your own eyes. And so you have to send expensive equipment down hole and this equipment sends this information to a computer. And that's what you're looking at right now. And you have to have an experienced geologist in order to interpret data and a good geologist will make or break a really good program. And so we are very uh, lucky to have this gentleman here to, to teach us today because he teaches, uh, he's one of the top geologists at Marathon and he would teach their geologists how to actually interpret this data. So he's gonna be very brief and very basic on this because it could be very uh, comp complex. And so we're going to keep it really simple. So Kevin, tell me, what are, we, what are we looking at here? What we're looking for in a well log and what we're looking for as we search for oil is the presence of three things. The presence of a reservoir, which in this case is a sandstone. The presence of oil or gas present within the formation. And also the capacity of that sandstone to hold oil and gas and to make it producible. And the way these curves show that are as follows. This curve on the far left is a diameter curve. It's called a caliper. And all it shows is the width of the borehole, the, the actual hole we have drilled uh, to complete the oil well. In this case, we're looking at a depth of about 2,620 feet. And we are looking at this log right here, which is called a gamma ray log. A gamma ray log simply shows you whether or not sand is present at a certain depth. Now, a gamma ray log indicates the presence of sand versus the presence of shale, which is not a reservoir rock. The farther this curve goes to the left, the more sand you have, the more proportion of sand you have at a given depth. For instance, this right here is a shaley, shaley portion within the well bore. This right here is a sandy portion within the well bore. This would be regarded as a potential reservoir of sand. Now, when you get back outside that reservoir, you encounter shale again. What we're looking for here is sand first. You can't have a reservoir without sandstone in this area. Okay, these log curves on the other side of the depth track. And, and Kevin, real quick, so what, a, what is a reservoir? What do you mean by that when you say that? A reservoir, people think of, of oil wells as pumping from an underground river, but actually what you're doing is you're pumping from an oil-saturated sandstone as if you had spilled oil on your driveway, which is concrete. Uh, you see how the oil sinks into that stone. That's what a, what's what a, an oil reservoir is actually like. Now, down hole, that sand can either be uh, have very tiny pore space, which P-O-R-E, which means it cannot hold much oil and gas, or it can have very high porosity, pore space, which gives you a larger area or a reservoir within the sandstone to bear oil and gas. So how do we, um, how do we find the porosity in a uh, oil uh, bearing sand? Okay, let's say that uh, we have located a, a good clean sand here, which we have. Now, we can tell that from the gamma ray log that we have a clean sand here. If we go 
to the next log over, we're looking at this induction log curve, which is the farthest to the left on this side of the well log, approximately where I'm showing. We're showing two different induction curves. Induction or resistivity is resistance to electrical flow within the reservoir. Um, if you have high resistivity, that means that whatever is in the sand is not transmitting electricity very well. The electricity sent out from our well log instrumentation. What you want to find is a higher resistivity. You see a base resistivity here, a base resistivity here. You see a higher than base resistivity here. You want to see a higher than base resistivity in conjunction with a clean sand. When you see those two together, you're probably looking at the presence of oil or gas, but possibly not. You could be looking at fresh water. Now, the way you can tell that you're not looking at fresh water is you consult a third curve called the neutron porosity or neutron density curve. This curve is an actual indicator of the presence of hydrocarbons in that sand. If you have a high neutron porosity curve in the presence of clean sand and in the presence of higher resistivity, higher induction, then you certainly have hydrocarbons present in this zone. Your next step is to find out if you have enough pore space or porosity to hold a producible reservoir. That's where we look at either the density porosity curve as defined by this dash or the neutron porosity curve as defined by a wider dash. So if we come back down to the same zone, we have the density porosity curve and the neutron porosity curve agreeing that we have a high porosity zone where there is a cleaner sand and a higher than base resistivity. So this is probably from here to here, a reservoir of sand that contains a degree of oil and gas that is producible. How do we know it's producible? If the porosity is greater than eight or nine percent, which is anything from here to the sky is the limit all the way out here, then we know we have enough reservoir space to make a producible oil and gas well. Now I'm going to take you down the hole in a little bit and show you a zone that is a producible and actually was a producible zone within this well. So this is a zone that you guys actually produce oil from. We produced uh, gas and oil from this zone right here. Now you'll see, uh, even compared to the zone we looked at earlier, right here, this zone is even a cleaner sand. You see the thickness of this zone is all the way from here down to below where the log is cut off. So we're looking at uh, over 30 feet of reservoir quality sand here. Now let's skip over across to the in induction resistivity track. Once again, this is your base resistivity. This right here is a high resistivity. That's another indicator that you have oil or gas present. It's high here also. Now let's look over at the porosity curves. You have the neutron porosity, which is going out to the right because it goes higher to the right. You have the density porosity, which goes higher to the left. So they're both agreeing that this zone right in here that's stippled, shaded, is a zone that has high porosity. Since it also has the indication of from the neutron density curve that you have the presence of hydrogen neutrons, which indicate the presence of gas, just absolutely, and you have 
high resistivity in this same area. This is a definite oil and gas reservoir through the shaded zone. And this is where we completed this well. Uh, so that's, that's a very quick and, and basic look. What you are looking for are these four things. Clean reservoir sand. You're looking for a higher than base resistivity. You're looking for a high neutron porosity curve and a high density porosity curve because they confirm each other. Where you have them crossing over or getting close to crossing over indicates the, the absolute presence of oil and gas. So this is a, a producible and uh, economic reservoir. It's economic because it's thick, it has high porosity, and it has indicators of absolute presence of oil and gas within the reservoir. Do you have any other questions, Sean? You know, I have a lot of other questions, but uh, I want to try to keep this video as brief as possible. But uh, Kevin, I really appreciate your time on this. You, you did an excellent uh, job explaining the basics of geology. And uh, we are currently uh, developing a play in New York. And so he has looked at the geology. We're very excited about the deal. If you guys have any questions and like to learn more about oil and gas, uh, please feel free to look in the des description. My contact information is in there. And if you'd like to ask uh, uh, Mr. Fowler or Kevin a few questions, uh, feel free to call me and we'll make that happen. But uh, Kevin, thank you so much for being here. And, uh, and I look forward to many more explainer videos discussing, because there's just not a lot enough videos out there. I get people ask me all the time, hey, you know, uh, is there any videos? Where should I go to learn? And so I'm tr trying to set this up in a way to where we could provide that resource to these guys. All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. And uh, uh, thank you very much for taking the time. And uh, please uh, like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Sean. No problem.